give it another minute or so before we begin. Thank you for joining me tonight. done. All right, so we're going to get started. Um, for those who have not been on one of these, my name is Julia Schwery and I'm an educational designer for ThermoWeb on their fabric side. I also have a blog called Inflorescence Designs and there you will find not only all my ThermoWeb projects, but you'll find other projects as well. Um, links to free patterns. I do a lot of blog hops. Uh, first things first, before we begin, I have a dual camera set up so that you can see what I'm doing over at the ironing workspace and then you can also see me sewing. Um, because of that and the way that it's set up, my computer, which where I can see the comments, is looking at me right now, at, which is at my sewing machine. So when I'm working at the ironing area, I can't see any comments, but we have Dawn on here and she is always a great help answering questions. Um, and I, I will take little breaks and come over here and take a quick peek at the comment section. And as well as at the very end, I will go back through any questions and answer them and I'll tag you so that even if you don't get it during the feed, you'll get a reminder of me answering a question. All right, um, if I reference any other projects, I will also link those. I don't think I'm gonna reference any tonight, but you never know. Um, and stick around because we are giving away a $25 online gift certificate and you gotta be present to win. So stick around to the end. Um, and so we're gonna get started. So tonight I'm gonna go now, I'm gonna move over to my workspace and get this set up to look at the sewing machine. All right. All right. That's my, my little cheat sheet. <laughs> all right. So we're going to begin. And tonight, as you've all seen in the photos, we are making hooded fun hooded bath towels and there it's all it's applicated on and this is actually I've actually just washed this too so you can see how it is held up in the wash this has been washed since sewn and for this size this is um, a just a basic bath towel I couldn't even tell you what size it is that the tag might go It does not say, but it is 100% cotton towel, and this is a basic hand towel. Now, for this project, I use the entire hand towel. You find tutorials out there, and they make them a little smaller if you're making it, let's say, for like an, an infant or a toddler. This size will definitely be too big, but it's something they can grow into. Um, so this uses the whole towel, which is really nice because it's going to fit older children who still like to use these. A lot longer and it could even fit an adult because of how big it is so so anyway let's get started so the first thing we need to do is we're not even going to worry about making the hooded towel yet that is actually the last thing we're going to do the first thing we'll be doing is making is doing the applique so for tonight I am using heat and bond soft stretch light and the reason I'm using this, this is generally, it's stretchable. It's generally for like your knit fabrics or anything that's got a little bit of a stretch to it. Um, the reason I'm using it tonight, because yes, the towel doesn't really give a lot of stretch, but the fibers are very, they move. And I feel like the soft stretch just has a softer feel. I know you can't feel it looking at the screen, but it just, it has a softer feel underneath there versus let's say like heat and bond light which is like the purple um, that will work uh, I did not try it on here but this just has a really nice soft touch 
being on the soft towel and that these fibers, the fibers do move back and forth. So, so we are using heat and bond soft stretch and I'm just using regular cotton. So this is hundred percent quilting cotton. So the first thing needs to be done is you need to fuse your heat and bond soft stretch to whatever fabric you are using. And I've already got this on the correct heat setting. And we're going to apply it. So it says you need to just place and hold the iron on the paper liner for about five seconds and repeat until bonded. So I just kind of move it around. And I have it on medium heat, um, so I'm even leaving it on there a little bit longer. You can also do high heat. The packaging says high heat for about five seconds. And I'm gonna let that cool. And I haven't done one on a, a, um, a live yet, but we're actually going to use a die cutter. I've used the heat and bonds and I've cut them out by hand so far, but tonight, I'm not sure how this is gonna look on the camera, we're actually gonna use a die cutter. You can use any die cutter you have, but this material, the soft stretch or any of the heat and bonds work amazing with the die cutter. And if you choose, if you're actually, if you're applicating letters, if you're not using a die cutter, um, just remember if you're tracing it or writing uh, it out to do it in the reverse. Otherwise you will find that your letters will be backwards depending on what letter. So we've got our fabric bonded. It's cooled down now and it's got a nice bond. We're going to cut out our letters. And the machine I'm using is called the Crossover 2. It's from Crafter's Edge. But any, any die cutter will work. I also, I have a another die cutter, but this one is what I have for the letters. And letters are also the same brand as this machine and we're gonna send them through. So it might shake my table, let's see. And it makes it so easy. And they're just such fun. There we go. We have an L, an I, and an A. And like all my videos, I've already done part of it so you don't have to watch me sew all night. But keep this. Um, and I am a hoarder of all, <laughs> of all scraps and I see plenty of potential with these big open spots. So I keep these in my scrap bins. This will go with the Heat and Bond Light. So. I did a video back in, I believe, January on how to use and how to organize your, your uh, scraps. You can check that out on the YouTube channel or you scroll back far enough on the Facebook page, you'll find it. All right, that was easy enough. So we've got our letters all cut out, all bonded. The next thing is to apply them to our towel. Now on the demonstration one that I had for the photos, my daughter wanted them right in the middle of her back. My older daughter, which is the one we're doing today, she wanted hers on the bottom. So as you can see, I've got a couple on there already. And I'm only going to do one letter at a time. I find I like, I just have more control of the, the uh, stabilizer that I'm gonna show you, that we're gonna use. 
So now we're going to adhere the letters to the towel. And for my letters, I made them two inches, which you can't really see. There we go. Two inches from the bottom. And they're about a quarter of an inch apart. So paper peels off nice and easy. right there and then again with your iron I am going to turn it up just a little bit this time press and hold for about five seconds We'll let it cool. Now we could just go and applique as is. However, because of this material and the, it could easily get caught in the feed dogs of your machine, we're gonna put a stabilizer on the back. So uh, the stabilizer I'm using tonight is the water soluble stabilizer. It, I use it with a lot of projects um, I use it a lot with the um, liquid vinyl because a lot of times with liquid vinyl, it doesn't want to feed through my machine. But with this on it, it slides right through, sews beautifully. So we're going to use it tonight. And we're also going to use pattern and stencil adhesive. This will keep it in place on your towel. It will also make it so it comes up easily. From experience, don't use the basting spray. I love the basting spray. It has a time and a place though. Don't use it on this project. From experience, I did and this got stuck. Um, not this in particular, I take that back. I was experimenting with other stabilizers and the other stabilizers got stuck to the towel and it was not a pretty scene. Anyway, this is the way to go. It washes right off when you wash this. It's great. So we're just gonna spray just a little bit on there. And I already have my letters kind of lined out so it already gives me a guide, which is great to just Press it on there. And then we're gonna go applique this. So I'm gonna go back over to the computer and if there's any questions, I'll answer them and I will sew this right up. And for this, I am doing a kind of a blanket stitch, but any type of applique, you can do straight line, you can do zigzag, whichever is your preferred method, that's usually my go-to.
Okay. So we're just going to repeat that same process, but here it is up close. And there it is on the back. And we're just going to repeat that for the next letter. Yeah, with the I saw some comments about the scraps. Yeah, I keep all mine. I need to come up with something. But then I just come up with other ideas and then I just move on with those and make more scraps. There's I just want to make all the things. <laughs> all right, so again, two inches up, about a quarter of an inch over. Cool. And the other one was already cut, so I'm going to kind of cut this one down to more of the size. You could also do like just a long piece. I find that when I did that, it got caught and it would like move on me. And this way, you're potentially using less. So again, I'm going to go over and I'm going to applique this. And when I do this one, I have a video to show you because this, the A is going to take a little bit longer because I got to do the inside and it's just a much bigger letter. All right, last letter. And I just love the colors of this towel. I let my girls pick out their colors. And my older daughter who, this is my older daughter, she, she likes blue. My younger daughter wanted pink and purple, but the store didn't have purple hand towels or bath towels, so she had to go with pink and blue.
All right, so I'm going to put on a video while I sew this one, and the video is gonna show you the process of washing this all out. Um, you can go in and you can trim. I would personally trim off any of these extra bits. I mean, it'll all wash out, but it just helps with the process. Um, but I will show that video while I'm sewing this letter. And all right, there it is. Hope, hopefully the video kind of gave you a glimpse of what it's like to wash it out. Um, I wanted to provide that since I can't really, well, I'm not gonna take you into my bathroom and try to rinse this out on live feed. It was hard enough videoing it and doing it with one hand, but y'all got to see it and that's the most important thing. So what I'll do before this gets 
used is I will do exactly what I did in the video. This will all get hand washed out. It comes off really quickly. As you can see, the I got the entirety of Melody's name done within two minutes. So, And that is the applique portion of this live. So I know the part you're all here for, how do we make it into a hooded bath towel? That part, my friends, is actually very easy. So the first thing you'll need to do is we're gonna actually just set this aside for a second. And you wanna grab your hand towel. And like I said earlier, if you're making this for a smaller child or and you particularly want it to fit like an infant or a small toddler, you would need to trim your hand towel down. We, however, are not, so we're going to keep it as is. And what you want to do is you'll want to fold your hand towel in half wrong, excuse me, right sides together. So tag's going to be on the outside. And we are going to, so we're going to start from this end. So this, the end where the crease is, we're going to sew straight line all the way down. I'm going to use some clips just to hold it in place for me. Now, depending on the towel you use, which in my case, I'm going to have to do it, is and your machine particularly, it could be your machine, maybe my machine just doesn't like it. It does not like this bulkiness right here. I even tried like hand cranking it through and it didn't like it. So I'm gonna walk you through hand stitching this part, just in case that happens to you. So I'm gonna go back over to the machine and you saw me on the video, I already changed my thread out and I'm going to stitch. I just stitch right along this line, almost like in the ditch of where the uh, hem is. So I'm gonna go do that. can't really see it but it is stitched and I did I did some back stitching right here but this is way too thick for my machine so I'm going to do what is called a blind stitch or sometimes it's called a ladder stitch and I already have my needle threaded and for things like this and a lot of times for a lot of the projects I use I use um, upholstery thread. You can pull pretty hard on it. It's really hard to break. My bobbin or my spool has seen better days. Looks like the dog got to it, but didn't harm the thread. So you can use just regular thread, whatever you typically use. I like to use this because it's just I don't know, maybe I have a heavy hand. So what we're gonna do first, we're gonna leave it inside out and I'm going to stitch the blind ladder stitch along here. So I always go in backwards because I want to hide my tail in the stitches. And let's see, you're going to, to do like a ladder stitch, we're going to do a small stitch on this side and pull it through and then we're going to go right over back kind of crisscrossing 
back to the other side and do a small stitch. I'm not sure if you can see that right there. And we're going to do that all the way down. And I'm just doing it in the crease of the towel. So I'm just going to go back and forth, back and forth. And I have my thread doubled. Um, that's a personal preference. And as you can see, I didn't quite line them up perfectly, but that's okay. We'll make it work. So then once I get to the end here, I'm gonna pull, and then this is where I'm going to turn it right set out because as you can see, it's got a little bit of a gap compared to where we sewed. So we're gonna go and we're going to do the same stitching, but on the outside, and we're gonna hold the fold wherever that, wherever that um, stitch line is, and we're gonna do the same stitches right here. And I'm actually gonna turn it because I'm doing it upside down. <laughs> this is much better. Upholstery thread is nice for this project as well because it's a bath towel. It's gonna get it's gonna get used. It's not just hanging pretty on the wall. It's a uh, it's my favorite kind of art. And I'm actually gonna just go back one more time. I have enough thread and like I just said, they uh, this isn't just some art piece on the wall. This is my favorite kind of of work. Something that is to be used and loved and. For those who maybe have followed me a little bit would know, and I'm gonna tie a knot here, my actual, what I studied in addition to a little bit of fiber arts was ceramics. So I made pottery. It is, the pottery I made was cups and bowls and plates, things to be used and loved and just, that was my kind of, my kind of art. So that's why I'm drawn to quilting and these, other fabric items, things that you can use. And I'm just gonna pull that through and clip it off. And there it is. So now there's really only one step left in this entire process, can you believe it? Nice and easy. Before we get to that, um, if there's any suggestions from anybody for projects, I have next month's figured out, but uh, beyond that, I do not. Uh, next month will be a little bit more um, detailed as it is we are doing t-shirt, using t-shirts and their easy tea stabilizer. So you want to definitely sh check that one out. I know a lot of people are, uh, ask, I'm, I'm sure they've asked you as someone who sews, have you ever made a t-shirt quilt or a t-shirt something? And checking out and seeing how uh, ThermoWeb's Easy Tea Stabilizer works, this would that would be the video to watch. So, but if you have any suggestions or questions or products you want me to demonstrate, um, just let me know. So as you can see, we already have a crease from the center. So this is the side we sewed, the crease from the center. I am just going to put a clip there for my own reference. And then we need to bring over the big towel. And making sure that we have it the correct direction. So I want my applique on the bottom, otherwise it'd be upside down. We're gonna find the center of the towel right here. 
here. And we're gonna clip those two together. I'm just gonna put a clip here first so I can lay this out flat. And what's nice, since we are not actually cutting the towels, we're just keeping them as is, there's no raw edges, everything's already finished for us. So that makes it a really quick project, uh, great for anybody you know, um, even if you know someone who's you know gonna be having a baby, this might be a little big, but definitely something that will grow with them, especially if you know the name, it's nice and personalized. So I'm going to line up my centers and pin them together. Now what I did is this, the big towel is laid out with the name on the bottom. So I have placed right side of the hood to the right side of the towel. The wrong side of the towel is right here. And that's because we can just sew straight across because the edges are already, already finished for us. And so now that I've got my centers pinned, I'm just going to clip along here. Now what's nice is you shouldn't have to hand stitch these ends because at least my machine will go through this end and the towel. It wouldn't go through two ends together, but it went through the end and the towel. I'm going to, again, take this over to the machine and backstitch right here. I would suggest backstitching like three or four times. This is a very um, high in uh, intensity point. You know, that this towel is gonna be hanging on someone's head and there, this is gonna have a lot of um, stress to it. It's a high stress point. So three or four times on this end, three or four times on this end. And there it is. I wish I could show you it what it looks like on, um, but I guess I could put it on and <laughs> you can see me wearing the hood. And as you saw with the other one, I actually appliqued. My youngest daughter wanted a paw print, she, so she got a paw print on the hood. I mean, the the possibilities are endless. With you could applique some, make this yellow and applique 
some cute little eyes and make it look like a beak and make it like a duck or, I mean, it's endless. So we are, up, we're done. Um, I'm going to go back over to the computer here in just a second. And I guess, uh, Dawn, we will draw the winner. But before we do that, I'm just going to go over the supplies again. Tonight we used Heat and Bond Soft Stretch. Um, the light, you want it to be the light. Uh, the Ultra is a no-so which wouldn't work very well with this project because of the fibers of the terry cloth towel. Um, and I use the soft stretch because it just has a softer feel than the heat and bond light, which is in the light purple packaging. You could, if that's what you have, it would work just as well for this. I uh, just a personal preference on the softness that this provides. Uh, I used spray and bond pattern and stencil adhesive. Again, I would suggest not using the basting spray. Stuff is fabulous, just not for this project. And then this does not have like a pretty packaging with it, but this is a Thermoweb's um, water soluble. Uh, I can't even think of the word at this moment. Stabilizer. It's kind of like a stabilizer. And it comes by the yard. It's all wrapped up pretty like that. So let me go on back over. I'll wear the hooded bath towel on my head. <laughs> there, water soluble topping. <laughs> Knew it was something. How do I look? It's very warm in my room. So this is actually very warm to wear. The iron and the lights and everything heat everything up pretty, pretty good. <laughs> it is. I want to make myself one. I really like, I really like this. I have a lot of hair, so I use two towels anyway. And this is fun. Thank you, Carlita. <laughs> All right. Don, I wasn't sure how um, the giveaway was going to be done. If, I don't know if you've been keeping track of everyone who's Oh, here we go. She's pulling the winner now. Drum roll. Thank you, Kathy. Genevieve Chamberlain. Congratulations. And should, um, there we go. I was going to say, how should she get a hold of you? All right. Well, thank you again, everybody, for joining in. Make a comment or Post a comment on our group page if there's something you're interested in seeing, a product, or even just the type of project. Like I said, next month it's we're using Easy Tea Stabilizer. Um, but beyond that, I have nothing planned yet. So, and I want to do what you want to see. And I hope everybody has a great night. <laughs>